Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. During times of war, one of the first strategic targets for the enemy is Air Force runways. Therefore, alternative runways may be needed, and even freeways make a good alternative. Modern aircraft such as the Saab JAS-39 Gripen were designed to land on runways to be rearmed and refueled there for continued operations. Vertical takeoff and landing aircraft do not need runways, rather just a patch of open and flat ground. Not only is the F-35B Lightning II one of the most advanced fighters ever, but it can land and take off from almost anywhere, thanks to its shaft-driven lift fan system. A vertical lift is provided by opening a main lift door just behind the cockpit and its engine nozzle swivels down 90 degrees for a more balanced system. There is, however, much more to simply landing an F-35B anywhere. Expeditionary advanced base operations must be carried out first. To build forward arming and refueling points for F-35B aircraft, the United States Marine Corps employs Expeditionary Advanced Base Operations, which integrate air ground logistics units. Marines quickly establish these advanced sites in harsh, sometimes dangerous conditions, providing immediate logistics and maintenance assistance. With its short takeoff and vertical landing capability, these FARPs allow F-35Bs to operate closer to battle zones, increasing striking capacity and decreasing turnaround times. Expeditionary metal 3D printing technology further aids in viable part fabrication on site, enabling self-sustainability in remote operations. In the U.S. Air Force, the Fairchild A-10 Thunderbolt II was known for its ruggedness and the ability to land in austere conditions. In emergency situations, A-10s are even able to land without lowering their landing gear. But as rugged as these warthogs are, the pilots still must train under these conditions. Oh, geez. That's terrible. When the warthog was developed, the U.S. Air Force realized they needed an aircraft for close air support which would need to fly low and slow to identify and neutralize ground targets. For that reason, the A-10 was built to withstand excessive ground fire and keep on functioning. A 
Abandoned Cold War air bases such as those found in Europe are the ideal spaces to train the A-10 pilots and their support crews on operating in austere conditions. So the mission of the TSP is to reassure NATO allies. We've been doing that by using micro deployments, uh, four A-10s at a time to uh, multiple countries. This is the final evolution of that, where now we're taking our entire squadron, putting them on an old Warsaw Pact runway uh, in the middle of nowhere uh, without any support. All it is is a uh, combat controller on the radio uh, and a frequency, and you will land an A-10s pretty much anywhere. Combat controllers in the United States Air Force play an important part in operations, such as an A-10 Thunderbolt II landing on a freeway, as seen in Michigan during a highway landing exercise. These airmen are critical in identifying and managing temporary landing zones in harsh or unusual situations, such as roads, determining their appropriateness for landing, establishing and managing communications, and commanding the aircraft's landing and takeoff. Simultaneously, support airmen ensure that maintenance, fueling and rearming, as well as all necessary supplies are handled quickly using expeditionary resources and procedures. These actions are part of the United States Air Force's Agile Combat Employment Plan, a forward-thinking approach designed to provide the force with operational flexibility and resilience, enabling fast response in unanticipated or hostile settings. This self-sufficiency enables the United States Air Force to maintain air supremacy in any given circumstance. When the A-10 Thunderbolt II was tasked with landing on a freeway, combat controllers first examined the area for length, impediments, gradient, and surface type. With permission, they installed temporary airfield tools, such as TACON for navigation, marking the touchdown zone and ensuring aircraft communications. Airmen immediately begin rearming and refueling operations after landing. Maintenance airmen quickly inspect the aircraft for any urgent problems that could jeopardize the plane's ability to take off again. Following the completion of rearming and refueling, tests are performed to ensure the aircraft's readiness. Combat controllers oversee the plane's takeoff after checking the runway is clear, executing the turnaround procedure in a relatively short window of time. Well, this is definitely different. If you look at the environment, if you look at the uh, uh, where the airplanes have to land, how they turn around, how they do their takeoff and landing calculations, that's all different in a scenario like this. So this gives us the opportunity to go through the planning, the preparation, and then the execution. Agile combat employment is not limited to a particular aircraft type but may be applied to a wide range of airframes, including the C-130J Super Hercules. Despite being larger than the A-10 Thunderbolt II, the C-130J has a more robust design and shorter takeoff and landing capabilities, making it suited for unconventional runways. An Air Force Reserve C-130J Super Hercules demonstrated this capacity by landing on a four-lane highway in Wyoming. This was done during the Rally in the Rockies in 2021. To 
To confirm the road's appropriateness for the Hercules, a detailed examination of its width, surface quality, and potential impediments was required. Post-landing, refueling, and minor maintenance were completed after the ACE concept. The event highlighted the interoperability and flexibility of various aircraft in carrying out the ACE concept, underlining the effectiveness of joint force members in carrying out such unusual operations. During Exercise Northern Agility 22-1 in Michigan, a U.S. Air Force C-145A Skytruck from the 919th Special Operations Wing and a U.S. Army CH-47F Chinook helicopter from the 3238th General Support Aviation Battalion demonstrated the ACE concept. The purpose was to quickly integrate an air expeditionary wing into a bear base environment, putting operational logistics and communication skills to the test in harsh conditions. The C-145A and CH-47F took off from their respective bases and flew to Munising, Michigan. Units quickly constructed logistical bases and communication hubs after rapid insertion, which is important in bear base circumstances. Personnel used aircraft like the C-145A Skytruck and CH-47F Chinook as they embody flexibility and utility under difficult circumstances, carrying out operations quickly. During Exercise Northern Strike 21-2, the C-146A Wolfhound from Hurlburt Field contributed to the advancement of the ACE concept. The aircraft landed and departed on Michigan Highway 32. A U.S. public highway designated solely for automotive traffic, marking the first such operation in U.S. history for the Wolfhound. The Wolfhound, which is capable of short takeoff and landing, can operate in unusual circumstances. Combat controllers use their adaptability to assure safe landing conditions by assessing obstacle clearance, surface grades, and road width. The C-146A Wolfhound lifted off after the appropriate tests, refueling and rearming, leaving behind a compact, efficient footprint. On occasion, dirt airfields may also have to be used. Several procedures are involved in preparing a dirt airfield for a big aircraft as part of the airfield damage repair process. The USAF Civil Engineering Squadron would first find a suitable area and ensure that the earth can resist large aircraft landing gear weight. The airstrip should be sufficiently wide and have a gradient of no more than 2%. The area is subsequently cleared of rocks, grass and impediments with construction equipment such as graders, loaders and bulldozers. After clearing and leveling, proof rolling is done to identify weak regions that can cause deformations. If any weak spots are discovered, they are removed filled with appropriate material and compacted. Another precaution is the use of dust palliatives, which can be sprayed by a properly equipped firefighting vehicle. This aids in surface stabilization by preventing dust and particles from flying during aircraft operations lowering the danger of foreign object damage to aircraft engines. The airfield is now ready for usage by large and small aircraft.
Special Operations Airmen built a dirt landing strip for a C-130J Super Hercules from the 75th Expeditionary Airlift Squadron on June 10, 2017, demonstrating joint service interoperability and mission execution. The airmen assisted air mobility liaison officers from the 621st Mobility Support Operations Squadron in creating and securing unprepared runways for aircraft operations. AMLOs, a force mostly made up of experienced military pilots and navigators, are trained for safe aircraft operations in remote locations where standard air traffic control facilities do not exist. In the proposed scenario, three AMLOs set up navigational markers for the C-17 pilots and took extensive safety measurements of the improvised runway to guarantee that even the C-130J Super Hercules took off and landed safely. Furthermore, AMLOs spoke with pilots via radio and coordinated with Army Rangers on the ground who would be doing a parachute jump. The dirt strip was rapidly turned into a usable runway, thanks to the combined work of Special Operations Airmen and AMLOs, who transport aircraft like the C-130J and C-17 and make sure they can operate safely in harsh circumstances. Agile combat employment is an important concept for U.S. Air Force aircraft, especially those stationed in Europe. Once the airfields have been destroyed, combat operations can continue, thanks to the abilities of aircraft to operate from pretty much anywhere. This concept allows the North Atlantic Treaty Organization greater flexibility and gives the enemy a larger strategic headache. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.